So I would like to start by saying, Aristotle used to say we are what we repeatedly do. But Aristotle didn't live nowadays, because nowadays we have social media, uh, cinema, TV, screens everywhere. So who, who are we? We are what we repeatedly see. So my question to you today is the following. What is a culture made of? A culture is made of a repetition of an image or of a concept that becomes a belief. That belief becomes the DNA of a culture. So what type of images have we created about women since we are uh, a majority, but we are treated as a minority globally, and we represent 50% of the population. So let's go and see what type of images. So it's uh, the perfect woman ob objectification. And so today, I would like to bring you in a journey where we go from the different type of storytelling. And my question to you is, if we change the storytelling, can we change the culture and therefore the role of women in society? And if so, how can we do this? And can men and women do this together? Well, I would like to bring you in this journey of the storytelling, starting from the fairy tales, then the advertising world, the movies, and finally the social media. So let's start with Cinderella, the most translated fairy tales in the world. So who is Cinderella? Cinderella is a young, beautiful woman. She has no friends beside a couple of birds and a family of mice. <laughs> she cleans all day long while she sings. It's very important because we do clean and sing at the same time. We are happy. And uh, <laughs> her uh, half-sisters are evil because she's prettier. And they're her competitor. The prince is going to choose only one. So. Cinderella, she's basically a victim of her own circumstance. She, what solution does she have? Well, let's try to think. Maybe marry a prince, number one. Number two, marry a prince. <laughs> Guess what is the number three? <laughs> marry a prince. So let's find out if Cinderella is going to marry the prince. Well, as we can... Uh, uh, for C, she goes to the ball with uh, nice crystal shoes, because who wouldn't go to a ball with nice crystal shoes? She loses one, the prince will rescue her, and finally, he will marry her, and Cinderella is rescued. So what is the uh, princess paradigm we are creating when we are reading these fairy tales to our children? First of all, that we women can speak to mice and birds. And <laughs> second, we clean and we laugh, we smile and we sing. Third, that without a man, we can go nowhere. Fourth, that we compete with each other. So I think that time has arrived to say goodbye to Cinderella, to Sleeping Beauty, or to Snow White, or any of these princes. And when I was little, I couldn't find any, you know, any example for me or to follow or any point of er reference. But I had a very special point of reference. My grandmother, Adriana. She was a strong woman. She was independent. She traveled the world. And she taught me that dreams, guess what, are genderless. So dreams have no gender. And then, if I believe in something, I can achieve it. I just have to work hard and believe in myself, regardless of my gender. So I was very, very lucky, because even if Adriana is not here with us any longer, she left me with this treasure. And then I decided to go to the United States and say, oh, let's change the world altogether. So let's go back to the journey of storytelling, advertising. So when we sell a car, we don't sell a car, but we sell an experience. So next to a fancy car, there is always a beautiful woman. So what is the storytelling here? That the man that owns that car has good chance to conquer the beautiful <laughs> woman, <laughs> right? So uh, the objectification of women in advertising is honestly everywhere. And it's tough to be a woman nowadays, because guess what? We have to have 
silky hair, you know, perfect body. We need to have white teeth, uh, whiter than the snow here. We need to be perfect. And guess what? We cannot age. No, we can't because we are like tuna fish. We have an expiration date. And the expiration date is younger and younger. Now, it's apparently for media, is around 28 years old. So, um, so basically, we smile at this when we become aware. But a lot of young girls, they feel insecure. They feel that they are not perfect, that nobody's going to desire them. And a lot of women, you know, they feel very insecure after 28, 30, 32, 35. I think that we have to change this paradigm because this paradigm makes no sense. Because we are focusing on only on beauty in women. Beauty is one element, but it's not the 100%. It's just a small piece. It's like, uh, you know, when we look at the moon and we look at the finger. No, let's look at the moon, then there is the finger. You know, and it's the same concept. But this uh, concept of beauty has changed in time. Because before, during the Renaissance time, until the French Revolution, this was the standard of beauty. So a little bit different, right? So, <laughs> so an easier, an easier uh, goal for us women, honestly. You know? <laughs> I would rather go to that direction. But uh, uh, so basically, this is a Rubens painting. So women were extremely pale, because it meant that they were you know, rich. They didn't have to work in the field under the sun, and they were a little bit voluptuous because that meant that uh, they uh, had money and they could eat. Now, we went from that paradigm to this paradigm. So, I would like to pause for a second and think that I believe that men also would like to have, you know, women represented as a subject more than as an object. I believe that men uh, are, you know, fathers, are husband, are business partner, and they would like next to them empowered women more than an object that has an expiration date. So, uh, as, a, as we do it together, we decided to create a new campaign where we focus on women uh, as a subject, as an example. And uh, we, the campaign is be the subject, not the object. And we were lucky enough to have a Nobel Prize, uh, Beatrice Finn, uh, for Econ campaign 2018 for the piece. Uh, so here I would like to show you a teaser. Very often as a woman in this field, you get discounted as naive, idealistic. I've worked on this issue for a decade. I run the organization that won the Nobel Peace Prize for it. Yet, in a, a taxi driver, when they ask me what I do, it's like, that's never going to happen. So it's extremely frustrated sometimes that there's this sort of discounting of your experience and your knowledge, which I don't think that men face. We want these powerful women to be heard and seen for who they are and what they really represent. We do it together. Hashtag be the subject, not the object. Thank you. So now I would like to bring you to the magical world of cinema. Let's see what is the storytelling there. And in this case, I would like to analyze who are the people behind and in front? So let's start, who are the protagonists? In 2017, the protagonists of the 100 most uh, uh, seen movies were 24% women and 76% men. And of these 24% women, most of them, their role was related to their 
to, you know, to their men. So they were either wife, um, daughters, or uh, sorry, wife, uh, mothers, or lovers. So we didn't really see uh, roles for women, uh, you know, were after their dreams, their career goals, but they were really related to the men. So they were desperate wife uh, trying to, um, you know, conquer their men back. Then let's see what, what are the numbers behind. We have the, seven, the 2017 because we just you know, are in 2019, so we don't have the exact numbers yet. But directors are only 7.3% female, which is really nothing. You know? And then we have screenwriters, 10%. And then we have editors, 14%. So, we must hire more women behind the, the screen and in front of the screen because the strength of our society relies in its diversity. We, can, uh, we cannot have only one point of view. We have to have multiple point of view. And uh, as we do it together at this moment, we are producing a documentary directed by Katya Lund called Reflection, where we analyze the images in the United States uh, of men and women that have shaped the American culture. And this is what we found out. We found out that the role of women is really related to beauty, youth, sweet, always sweet. And the role of men instead is, uh, men too has a paradigm. The man needs to be extremely successful, strong, always have an answer. In the state has a gun. So these are two boxes. They're both boxes. We have a pink box and a blue box. But what's the difference between the two boxes? The male paradigm is an independent paradigm that pushes the man to be successful, achieve his dreams. OK, still a box, but it's a little bit bigger. The female box is very small because it only focuses on beauty and youth and depends upon the choice of men. So when the man chooses the woman, then that's when the life of the woman will change. So, we, uh, as we do it together, we believe that no boxes are needed because we're human beings and no matter what, right? So, but our box is so small that now we're concentrating on ours. And now I would like to bring you to the journey of social media because now it's the most powerful tool. Why? Because we have 76 billion people in, in planet Earth and, and 3.2 are active social media users. So how can, uh, why social media is so important? They've done a study in the state which is uh, amazing because the way we uh, see our body is really related to uh, social media around, you know, 20% men and women, and then TV, you know, so we are influenced, so we feel fat, according to what we see on TV, or old, what we see on uh, social media. Guess what, what is the percentage of mirrors? Look at this, 1.15% and 1.55%. So basically, the illusion is more important than reality. So I believe that right now, it's in the last two years, a lot of important things have happened for gender equality. This has, been, this has been the years where we had our first female superhero, Wonder Woman, and we did pretty good, over 400 million in box office. This was uh, the year where in the last election in the United States, we had over 120 women elected. This is the year where, in the last two years, where in Saudi, women can drive. So I believe that talent is genderless. And I dream of a society where men and women together are different, but they're equal. And I believe that all of us today, we can change the storytelling and the paradigm, first of all, by not reading you know, princess stories to our children. Choosing movies by women about women. And third, we have the power as author through social media. Why? Because we are creator of our content by posting a picture. We are distributor by sharing a post. We are critique by liking a post. 
So the power of the storytelling is in each individual. So let's pay attention to what we post, what we share, and let's make sure that it's not anymore about gender, but it's about individual. And let's make sure that we create a society where people are investing in people. Thank you very much.